And with that, <clears throat> I'd like to go ahead and call the first three speakers. We're going to start with Chairman Marcus Lopez, then Julianne Cordero Lamb, Kathleen Grace Ryan. So Chairman Marcus Lopez, we're gonna go ahead and unmute you so you can give your comment. Okay, it sounds like we might be having some technical difficulties there. Why don't we go ahead and move on to Julianne Cordero Lamb and then we can come back to you, Chairman Lopez. Julianne. All right, next up we have Susan Funk. Oh wait, I'm sorry, Kathleen Grace Ryan, I apologize. Kathleen. It looks like you may not be with us right now. So, okay. Let me first see before I call out the names, I guess, if folks are so. It looks like Susan Funk is up, then Tammy Russell, and then Inga Dahmer. Susan Funk. Hi, my name is Susan Funk. I am Mayor Pro Tem of Atascadero, and I'm a candidate for County Supervisor in San Luis Obispo County. I'm speaking personally today, not on behalf of either body. I support prompt designation of Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. This stretch of ocean and coastline offers cherished experiences, vital resources, and sacred heritage to peoples of the Central Coast, both native peoples and those of us who came later. It warrants the protection that the sanctuary designation will provide. In turn, I appreciate that care has been taken to preserve commercial and recreational fishing and military uses in these waters. People have lived in this coastal region for thousands of years, including the Chumash and Salinan peoples. Many leaders have helped the sanctuary come into being, yet a simple name is needed. With no disrespect, I support the proposed name, Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. I do have refinements to recommend. The first relates to clean energy. The marine life and ecosystems being protected are also at risk from ocean temperature rise and other effects of global climate change. Both the current Diablo Canyon power plant and wind energy are needed in this effort. The agency recommended alternative map seems to assume an either or choice between wind energy and protecting ocean life. That is a false dichotomy. You can do both. Regulars need not and should not leave crucial portions of the ocean and coastline from Cambria to Diablo Canyon unprotected from oil and gas development in order to allow responsible and efficient development of clean wind energy. Start with the, the original map plus the extensions and request or allow additional flexibility to make it work. For example, in the NOAA information session, it was noted that NOAA issues five-year leases, but longer lease times may be needed for wind energy development, given the risks and scale of the investment involved. My experience as a public official leading countywide change is that there is a pathway forward to get divergent interests, agencies, and jurisdictions to work together and achieve seemingly completing goals if you're willing to think outside the box and do the work. Don't throw up your hands with a big territorial carve out in order to let wind energy develop responsibility. Do the work. Additionally, Diablo Canyon is a vital resource to greenhouse gas reduction. Its marine impacts are known and monitored and, and manageable. So the proposed grandfathering should be flexible enough to accommodate the complexities of a license renewal process with uh, the state and the feds both involved. Last, the region is home to multiple tribal groups and only one of them is federally recognized. Include all tribal groups in the advisory council and develop the par partnerships needed to make the sanctuary a robust ecological and educational treasure for future generations. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Inga Dahmer, Peter Etnoyer, Sebastian Valverde, and Douglas Shinoda. So Inga, go ahead and provide your comment. Thank you, my name is Inga Lorenzen Doimer and you did that just great, thank you. I'm a member of the public and I'm almost gonna echo the speaker before me because I too believe in the original with the extensions map and keeping the entire coast, including Morro Bay somewhat more protected. Um, I also agree with including all tribes in the advisory council because there are many 
I'm in Pacific Grove, and so I'm the coast, you know, uh, 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 ocean. Uh, Ohlone, Costanoan, you know, they're, they're a collaboration also. But um, the oil and gas development, I don't think it's an either or either. I think that the wind and all of that can go right through the sanctuary, and I would like to see us connected, Monterey Bay and this new sanctuary. And of course, this new sanctuary is just going to be wonderful. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. So we did have a request to call a few more names than just three. Uh, so I'll do my best to do that. Um, but just know that things are a little dynamic right now, as you can tell, people are having some technical difficulties and then some folks have um, dropped off because they had already provided public comment previously. So. Um, some of those names I just called are not with us anymore, so I will go ahead and now call up next John Murdoch, Michael Gravitz, Jared McLeod, Michael Waschek, Pete Stouffer. Like we may have lost Jared. So next up is Michael. You? Pete Stouffer. Are you available to give your comment, Pete? Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Oh, great. <laughs> uh, my name's Pete Stauffer, and I'm the National Ocean Protection Manager for Surfrider Foundation. Uh, Surfrider is a grassroots organization that's dedicated to the protection and enjoyment of the world's ocean, waves, and beaches for all people. And Surfrider is working on a written comment letter with our local San Luis Obispo and Santa Barbara chapters that will provide much more detailed info. So my oral comments today are a very high level summary of our feedback. Uh, firstly, Surfrider strongly supports the designation of Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. We're very proud to support the New Northern Chumash Tribal Council in this effort. And we're very happy to see the designation move forward. Surfrider urges NOAA to officially designate the sanctuary by the middle of next year after your thoughtful consideration of public comments. And we urge NOAA to finalize a strong management plan and strong regulations that will provide lasting protection for the region's ecological and cultural resources. These regulations should include a prohibition on any new oil and gas exploration, development, and production as well as regulations to protect the seabed, water quality, and Rodriguez Seamount. With respect to sanctuary boundaries, Surfrider supports the initial boundary <laughs> alternative along with the Gaviota Extension 5B option. Uh, Surfrider members were very disappointed that the waters from Morro Bay to Cambria were not included in the agency's preferred alternative. And we urge you to adopt the original proposed boundaries Surfrider also recognizes that the Morro Bay wind energy area will likely require electrical transmission cables, uh, assuming offshore wind projects are approved. Surfrider believes the installation of such cables can... Brand somehow lost audio control there for a moment, um, so I apologize for that. Um, but thank you, Pete, for your comment. I would like at this time to go back to Chairman Marcus Lopez and see if we can't get your comment now. And then following that, I would like to go to Colby Concho Kratzer, Dan Silver, Judith Lum, and then Virginia Ansaldi. So Chairman Lopez. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you, NOAA staff and civil society. My name is Marcus V. Lopez, senior captain of the Chumash Tomo, past captain of the Tiat, and now as chairperson representing the Badrinho Chumash Tribal Council of Santa Barbara County. We do not support the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary proposal. It does not reflect our rights of self-determination by imposing further regulation. Our human rights are represented by the United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples, 
Article three gives us the right that self-determination is essential. And we should protect our sacred places in our home waters, not NOAA. It is up, it is up to us, the Chumash peoples, to determine our heritage, not outside bodies. We want to reach out to the fishing communities that the right of the commons and their indigenous rights can be an allied force to develop a sustainable future for us all and not regulate us by outside entities. What we want to express our concern to the environmental organization and social justice communities that support this national marine sanctuary. Don't be misled or manipulated in supporting this proposal. To those that are using greed and gain as a determining factor to support the National Marine Sanctuary, shame on you. The development of a true indigenous sanctuary and to create a true maritime fishing commission that includes the Salinan and the Tongva peoples can be better, is a better approach, can be more effective as a true co-management approach. Once again, the Bottom of Chumash Tribal Council does not support the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. The following is an appeal to the public and UNOA not to implement the National Marine Sanctuary as currently and currently conceived. Instead, establish a co-management partnership that can truly represent and, com and capacitate the rights and the responsibilities of the Chumash people to our home waters. This is extremely important. The Commons refer to cultural and natural resources accessible to all mammals in society. We indigenous peoples call it our relatives, protect our relatives by not supporting this Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up is Colby Concho Crosser, followed by Dan Silver, Judith Lum, Virginia Ansaldi, Arlo Hemphill. So Colby. Colby, it's saying that you didn't enter a pin, so uh, hopefully you just received that. Um, but it, again, it's showing that you are self-muted on your end. So if you're joining via the computer audio, um, then you would just kick, click, click, excuse me, the little microphone icon with the slash through it to unmute yourself. Okay, Colby, we'll go ahead and come back to you. All right, so it looks like some folks have dropped off. So again, it's pretty dynamic here. So we got to keep Hello? us on our toes. Hello, yes. am I here Colby? now? Yes. yes, I can hear you. Oh, good. <laughs> I, Go I ahead. I've a lot of different places. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, at any rate, uh, my name is, I go by Concho. Uh, that's in the middle of my name on your screen. Uh, I'm a member of the great Lakota nation, Ojeti Sakawin, and I'm living on land cared for by the Chumash people who occupied the coastal lands from northern part of Santa Monica Bay, where I grew up, to uh, Morro Bay, where I currently live. I've lived here for 34 years. And so I really thank you for welcoming the indigenous people to collaborate and to uh, eventually manage uh, the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. Uh, I moved up to Morro Bay in uh, late 80s and uh, was elected to two four-year terms as a council member for the city of Morro Bay. And uh, that was in 1992 and then uh, re elected again in 1998. So my political identity, both uh, in public speaking and in other forums, was always consistent as an environmentalist. Uh, I was, I've been an ocean protector since I learned to surf in Santa Monica Bay uh, back in my early teens. My wife, Shush, and I have been vocal advocates for marine sanctuary protection along these uh, coastlines for the past two decades and more. Uh, myself, as a conservation chair for the Sierra Club, the Santa Lucia chapter here locally in San Luis Obispo County, and then uh, on the dais as a council member. And uh, the amazing people of Moore Bay elected someone who self-identified as indigenous and, and as a, 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 uh, a strong advocate for environmental protection. I believe that uh, we need to have a contiguous sanctuary protection all the way from the San Francisco Bay, Farallon Islands, and the Monterey Bay uh, 
marine sanctuaries, which terminate just north of us in Cambria to uh, the south to connect with the Channel Islands marine sanctuaries. In other words, from San Francisco Bay to LA County, even though uh, Paul Michel did mention that uh, there are these marine sanctuary protections up and down the coast of California, the proposed alternative, uh, 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 pr pr proposed site is excluding the most vulnerable part, that is the parts off Moore Bay and Cayucas. And uh, I, please do not exclude the waters uh, off here from Point Luchon to Cambria Southern extent. And by the way, while I am a member of a federally recognized tribe, that is the Sisitan, Wapitan, Oyate, um, I'd never object to a sanctuary because it failed to include Lakota in its name. Uh, that would be divisive and self-destructive. So thank you for taking public comment. Thank you. Okay, let's see who we've got next. So Claudia Engel I'm, is next on the list, but I'm not seen in attendance. So uh, let's go with Rosemary Wren. Okay, pretty dynamic here. Uh, so Jeffrey Land, I'm sorry, I take that back. I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm, I apologize. Jacqueline Moore, followed by Richard Sadowski, Jeffrey Land, Diego Magana. So I apologize, Jacqueline Moore. Jacqueline, if you can hear me, it looks like you are offline for some reason. So we will go ahead and come back to you. <clears throat> so Richard Sadowski. Richard, I've unmuted you, showing you're muted on your end. So if you want to unmute. Hello? Hi, Richard. Okay. Richard Sadowski, Homefront Environmental Justice, Morro Bay. Homefront is in support of the original um, uh, map for the designation of the uh, Shumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary with the Gaviota Coast Extension. In addition, I would like to see the Morro Bay Estuary included in the sanctuary waters as well. We, um, looking at the sanctuary as a holistic um, uh, enterprise, I think that we, uh, we need to include the uh, coastal blue carbon areas um, in, in the sanctuary as well. And regarding the uh, wind farm in issue, I think that, uh, you know, as we educate, as we're ed getting better educated on the seriousness of the climate change and climate um, uh, um, uh, action, um, I think that uh, the public is going to uh, uh, come to a realization that we need to get off renewable and fossil fuels as soon as possible with the elevated uh, carbon dioxide, atmospheric carbon dioxide uh, levels uh, increasing. And uh, I think that um, regarding the um, the uh, the Shumash name, I think that we need to get past any kind of division and whatever uh, whatever brings people together, whatever it brings together, then that's to include that whole original map would be um, would be uh, beneficial. And so, um, and then the other thing is, is I think that I I like. I like that uh, we have a action plan and to finalize it by 2024. And I think that we should uh, keep that in mind and uh, protect our Morro Bay coast from potential oil and mineral development and uh, high energy ocean blasting. And um, uh, really with the way the uh, country, the divisiveness of our 
country at this time, I think uh, there should be a sense of urgency to get this designation done um, as soon as possible. Thank you. So next up would be Claudia Harmon Worthen. And if they're here, Jane Baker, Carol Millar, Christina Longa, Liz Wiggins. So Claudia Harmon Worthen. Okay. Hi, this is uh, Claudia Harmon Worthen. I'm the president of Beautify Cambria in Cambria. Um, we are in the process of uh, certifying Cambria as a international dark sky community. And so we're very concerned about some things that are happening with the uh, offshore wind. Uh, we will be uh, opposing some of the things on that that will affect our dark sky initiative. Um, I think that the things most important for us, uh, those of us who actually live on the coast and actually look at the ocean every day, I want to let all know that the, uh, the wind turbines will be seen from the shore. The lights will be seen at night. So if you're thinking that it won't, they will, uh, especially if they raise them up to a thousand feet. By the time they build, it could be taller. So um, we're very much opposed to uh, cutting out Cambria and Sin Simeon. Um, I'm just trying to think of how the migrating uh, mammals are going to get through this area if they have to, you know, put detour signs up, you know, to, you know don't go through here because you're going to get killed, you know, with the, with the wires and cables and things. I, I'm kind of joking about that, but I think that if, I, I agree with a, a man earlier who said that we would, should be able to somehow work this out so that the mammals can be protected um, and have, have the wind turbines out there. And that's another subject about where they're put. But um, so my main, our main concern is um, is, is not cutting out Cambria and San Simeon. I think it's, I think it's wrong. I think it doesn't make sense. Uh, it needs to be contiguous. And I think it's gonna cause a lot of problems. The other thing is, is that we don't know if those wind turbines are gonna be built. And it could be years before they're actually built. And here we've cut this out prematurely. So please don't do that. Uh, let's go ahead and, and certify the whole area. I love the uh, fact that you've brought in the, uh, the Southern part. Um, I think that's important for the reasons that uh, the gentleman in the beginning from Doha um, uh, mentioned. Uh, so um, I could say a lot more, but I'm gonna write my comments about, about those things and hopefully those will go in the record uh, and be considered. Uh, but just remember that we really need to have this a contiguous, uh, contiguous uh, marine sanctuary. And I'm uh, of Native American descent and I'm not I don't I'm not resentful that my the name of my tribe is not on the on the name of this it's the Shumash going back to Fred Collins who who created this and and, for, and pushed forward with it and they've spent years and years and years if the other tribes wanted to be involved they should have joined um, so that's my opinion um, personally thank you very much and look forward to the rest of comments thank you so let's see, next up we have Carol Millar, and then Nate Irwin, and then Elaine Albright. So Carol? Carol, a similar situation as before, it, shows, it looks like you're joining via web and phone, um, and that you are self-muted, and that you may not have called in using the audio pin. Oh, can you hear me now? Ah, yes, perfect. Oh, okay, great, sorry about that. Um, I'm here both as a representative for 350 Santa Barbara and as a private citizen. As a representative of 350, we want as large a sanctuary as possible to keep fossil fuel extraction out. We also realize that green energy is a necessary component for a sustainable future and that the fossil fuel companies and our governmental policies have put us in a position where there, there are no good choices, only less bad ones. And the least bad choice here, in our opinion, is to figure out how to make the wind farm compatible with marine protections. Speaking as a private citizen and a very middle income person, I'd be willing to pay more for wind energy that takes into account uh, protections for the ocean. Being a middle income person, my family and I often stay close to home for our family vacations. And Santa Cruz Island became our Kennebunk port Part of what we loved, for those of you old enough to know what that means, part of what we loved was snorkeling at Prisoners Bay and Scorpion Bay. The Channel Islands Marine Sanctuary made that a rich experience that is now part of our kids' most cherished memories. Um, so I think having this larger sanctuary will keep 
uh, you know, all of this environment more vibrant and allow um, experiences like that for generations to come. It's an overused phrase, but still true that we and nature are in an existential battle. Any little and even large steps we take are in a race with time. It's kind of like trying to keep up your muscle strength after the age of 50. So let's do as much as we can in the quickest amount of time and overcome the hurdles. All of the ones that were mentioned seemed a bit like relics from a time when there wasn't so much urgency. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next we have Nate Irwin, followed by Elaine Albrick, and then Carol Reeder. And then we will head to Jordan Wright and Juan Rosas. I can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, my name is Nate Irwin and I'm representing the Santa Barbara Channel Keeper. Our organization works to protect and restore the Santa Barbara Channel and its watersheds through science-based advocacy, education, field work, and enforcement. We are asking NOAA to designate the largest sanctuary possible as originally proposed by the Northern Chumash Tribal Council, as well as including the Gaviota Coast Extension. This would provide full protection for these waters and establish important connectivity between two existing national marine sanctuaries in Monterey Bay and the Channel Islands. And it's according to a 2019 paper from Global Ecology and Conservation, connectivity is a fundamental ecological process in maritime ecosystems that promotes both persistence and recovery of populations through the dispersal of marine life across populations, communities, and ecosystems. And this is really important because according to Dr. Stephen Gaines, the Dean of the Bren School of Environmental Science and Management at UCSB, the central coast of California has incredible biological assets that warrant protection, some of the highest diversity of marine mammals on the entire planet, and one of the world's sharpest biological transition zones at Point Conception. So the current agency preferred alternative removes over 2,000 square miles of originally proposed protected area and the potential benefits derived from these highly productive ecosystems being connected. A principal reason for removing this area is to make it easier for offshore wind developers to complete their projects with less review, oversight, and consideration for the adverse impacts these projects will have on, marine, on the marine environment. And according to the EIS uh, for the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary, several companies on the east and west coast have developed, deployed, and operated transoceanic fiber optic cable projects through National Marine Sanctuaries, relying on the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries authorization process for construction of the cable and special use permit for continued presence of that cable within the sanctuary seafloor. Similarly, an authorization process and special use permit must be used to oversee the offshore wind projects off of Morro Bay. It is imperative that the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary elevates indigenous perspectives and cultural values, honoring the history and culture of, of the Native Americans who have inhabited this region for more than 10,000 years, as well as perform the critical conservation purposes established by the National Marine Sanctuaries Act. There is a pathway forward that will balance the needs of industry with the need to protect our nation's priceless oceans. Again, we are asking NOAA to designate the largest sanctuary possible as originally proposed by the Norman Northern Chumash Tribal Council, as well as the Gaviota Coast Extension. Thank you so much for the opportunity to provide input into the process and for moving forward with the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. Thank you. Next up to speak is Elaine Albrick. So let's go ahead and try Jordan Wright. Jordan? If you could unmute. Yes, I can hear you. All right, wonderful. So my name is Jordan Wright. Thank you for having me. Um, first off, I do support the Chumash Marine Sanctuary designation. Um, I am a lifelong waterman and I've surfed and swam in these waters responsibly since I was a child. And my children uh, do so now as well. Uh, I'm a passionate environmentalist. I'm also a big wave surfer, and much of my use of this area now occurs uh, when some of the largest waves of winter occur in our region. My comment is specifically in regards to the possible future 
personal watercraft restriction in regards to the wildlife disturbance plan. Uh, many of you may not know that the area covered under the proposed marine sanctuary includes numerous surf spots with waves similar in size and ferocity to Mavericks in Half Moon Bay. These areas are exceptionally dangerous with waves from 20 to 50 foot occurring throughout most winters. And many of these waves are very far from shore and are often exceptionally difficult to access from shore. There's a large and growing number of big wave surfers who use this region for both paddle and tow in surfing in these types of conditions. Personal watercraft are an absolutely integral part of maintaining our safety in these situations and are used to rescue surfers after a fall or to quickly get out of harm's way or in the event of an injury or an emergency such as a shark attack, a drowning or you know, any other emergency, um, personal watercraft operators in conjunction with the other surfers truly function as the first line of defense to provide advanced life-saving care, whether that's putting a tourniquet on or CPR or simply getting um, the victim to shore or to the helicopter from the Coast Guard or whatever it is as quickly as possible. Um, the majority of us are trained to self-rescue. Uh, we often have first aid kits, tourniquets, defibrillator devices on board our personal watercraft. Um, most of us are trained in CPR and first aid. Um, though I'm a private citizen, I've trained with the Half Moon Bay Harbor Patrol, the U.S. Coast Guard, CAL FIRE, uh, as well as many other agencies in regards to personal watercraft operation for ocean safety specific to big wave surfing. Um, the vast majority of surfers that I know are responsible environmentalists. We're cognizant of wildlife. We're cognizant of marine mammals during these activities. Um, we're not sort of the stereotype personal watercraft operator that people may have in their mind as far as just kind of motoring around loudly for no reason. Um, surfers are not going to stop surfing in these areas or, or in these situations, whether personal watercraft are allowed or not but they are 100% safer with the support of personal watercraft. Uh, numerous surfers have died in big waves while surfing when personal watercraft are not able to be a part of the safety plan. And your we all want to... Time is up, you said? Yes, I'm sorry, your time is up. Got it. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Next up to speak is Juan Rosas followed by Daniela Schulman, and then I'd like to revisit Elaine Albrecht and Carol Reeder. So Juan Rosas. Juan, we've unmuted you on our end, showing you're muted on yours. If you'd like to hit that little microphone icon. Should be up in the control panel on the right-hand side if you've joined by computer. If you have joined by phone, try the star six option to see if that will unmute you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead, Juan. Buenas tardes, my name is Juan Rosas. I'm speaking on behalf of the Hispanic Access Foundation for La Creación Network. Today, I wanna to express our strong and unwavering support for the designation of Chumas Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. The proposed sanctuary encompassing the initial boundary alternative in the Gaviota Coast Extension is vital step towards protecting approximately 70, uh, 7,600 square miles of ocean along the central coast of California. It's not just about conserving natural resources, it's about preserving biodiversity, critical habitats, and the rich cultural history of our indigenous communities. As a faith leader, leader and a member of our community, the Schumacher Heritage National Marine Sanctuary holds a special place in our hearts. It's where we come together with our families and our churches, communities to enjoy the beach and to participate in and observe baptismal ceremonies. The ocean will always have played a crucial role in our lives, providing recreation, spiritual fulfillment, community bonding, and economic well-being. It's not just about us. It's about ensuring that the future generations can benefit from a clean, safe, and healthy marine environment. It's about guaranteeing marginalized Latino communities and other la local communities have equitable access to clean and safe oceans and coastline for recreations, livelihood, and culture. We envision a future where wetland, coastal reef, and underwater ecosystems are protected and restored, enhancing coastal re resilience against the rising sea levels, 
flooding and other effects of climate change. We dream of an ocean free from pollutions and plastics free from the threats of offshore drilling and mining to harm not only local communities, but also the global climate. I wholeheartedly endorse the designation of the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary, and I urge you to consider the following key points. Number one, the sanctuary boundaries. We support the largest possible continuous sanctuary boundary specifically, the initial boundary combined with the Gaviota Coast Extension, offshore wind, while we recognize the importance of offshore wind as a source of renewable energy, we also acknowledge its potential environmental impacts. The sanctuary initial boundaries alternative will help guide offshore wind development to suitable areas. Number four, the sanctuary name. We endorse naming the sanctuary the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary to honor the heritage of the Chumash people and recognize their enduring connection to the coastal region. Number five, tribal collaborative management. We support equitable collaborative management, inclusive of all tribal groups, culture affiliated with the proposed sanctuary area. Number uh, outreach and education. The sanctuary outreach and education efforts should be multilingual, multicultural, and focused on undeserved communities. Partnering with tribal groups, local schools, community organizations, and educators is vital. Dismantling knowledge about marine science, conservation, too much history and culture. In conclusion, we urge the administration to designate the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary, safeguarding our ocean's treasures for the well-being and enjoyment of current and future generations. We must act decisively to ensure the continual health and vital of our coastal ecosystem and cultural heritage. Thank you for your dedication to this important cause. Dios los bendiga. Thank you. Sorry about that. Okay, next up is Daniela Schulman, followed by Elena Albrick, Carol Reeder, Rachel Condor, Aja Hudson. So Daniela, Daniela, I will go ahead and come back to you. So next up is Elaine Albrick. Elaine, you're unmuted on our end. I, I, think this, I think this might be me, even though it's the wrong name. It's uh, Olivia Jamin here. Uh, I was forwarded the link by Elaine, but I don't have any comments at this point. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, next we'll go to Carol Reeder. Carol, Hello? can you hear me? Hi, Carol. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. This is Carol Reeder. Um, we are residents of Santa Cruz County, north of the area, but spend a great deal of time in the Monterey and Morro Bay areas. We um, have already made personal comments. However, I wanted to share that I spent the weekend with the tribal leadership of the uh, Chumashalinan people of the Central Coast who do support this uh, effort. They would like to um, make sure that the boundaries are the original boundaries proposed along with the Gaviota extension. They feel very honored to be possibly included in the management of this sanctuary. They would um, be happy to have outreach to the Northern Chumash in that process of uh, governing and helping um, the stewardship of the Marine Sanctuary. They have been um, un interested in putting uh, the Esalen name in, um, but we do understand that the other um, tribal groups may feel differently. However, I think the appreciation to the Northern Chumash for their efforts in beginning this process and standing by this process, which we all know has been a very lengthy process and is not done yet, um, should give them the position of having their name foremost in the naming of this sanctuary. So um, we also had a discussion about the issues with um, governmental relationships. And it seems that there must be a way to work with NOAA and have this sanctuary um, be a real cooperative effort that we don't need to feel that because we are cooperating in preserving and um, sustaining and having stewardship over this area is going to conflict with 
um, self-determination of tribal people. So please make this sanctuary um, fit the boundaries of the original proposed uh, boundaries, and please allow the name to include and honor the Chumash who have fought for this all along. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have Rachel Condor, Aja Hudson, followed by Cody Phillips, Matthew Ramirez. So Rachel. Hi, thank you very much, uh, Rachel Condor. I am a staff attorney for the Environmental Defense Center. And I am here with two of my colleagues, but we'll be covering slightly different topics and we will be brief. So we first of all, just wanna thank you all so much for your hard work on this tremendous effort to designate the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. Your efforts will result in the permanent protection of a very special place and will create a lasting legacy for future generations. The proposed sanctuary is a true natural marvel, hosting a wide array of sea life like whales, dolphins, sea turtles, and sea otters. Because of all the amazing attributes of this place, we strongly support designation of the um, sanctuary, obviously, and then with the boundaries of the initial boundary alternative and the Gaviota Coast extension. So I wanna just briefly address two points in my comments today. Um, first, as several other people have mentioned, we understand that the location of potential energy transmission cables from the wind farms in Morro Bay wind energy area through the initial boundaries as proposed would require additional management considerations by NOAA and ONMS. But at this time, no one knows for certain what path those cables might eventually take, and they may in fact have to go through Monterey Bay Sanctuary um, or another route. So therefore we urge NOAA to designate the sanctuary and then consider permitting the cables under its special use permitting authority um, instead of leaving out 2000 square miles of potential sanctuary. Um, because those areas that are left out that leaves them vulnerable to a number of threats like oil and gas drilling, new oil and gas drilling, seabed mining um, and dirty water polluting waste products and many other things that would be prohibited within a sanctuary. And second, uh, with regard to vessel traffic, we urge NOAA to add three requirements to its regulations. One, add a vessel speed restriction of 10 knots like the National Marine Fishery Service has on the East Coast to protect right whales um, with all of the increased traffic from the wind farms. Um, two, consider spatial planning to require vessels to avoid certain places where, male, sorry, where whales and other marine life congregate. And last, um, we ask you to impose a requirement that vessels use cleaner fuel that's already required by the state of California within 24 nautical miles of the coast. So thank you very much again uh, for all you've done to protect this place. Okay, next is Aja Hudson, followed by Cody Phillips, Matthew Ramirez, Claudia Harmon Worthen, and Julie Reyes. Aja? Um, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, great. Um, so my name is Asia Hudson, a Marine Conservation Analyst with Environmental Defense Center. Um, I would like to reiterate our thanking of NOAA for working with local communities, tribal groups, and other interested stakeholders to protect the marine environment off the central coast. Um, EDC strongly supports the designation of the initial proposed boundary along with the Gaviota Coast Extension. Connectivity of pro protected areas is important for maintaining diversity, fish stocks, and essentially, especially important for maintaining ecological resilience, which is why it is imperative that the National Marine Sanctuaries adopt this trait by designating the initial proposed boundary with the Gaviota Extension. National Marine Sanctuaries act as a haven for endangered species and sensitive habitats while also acting as living museums for maritime, cultural, historical, and archeological resources. The stretch of shoreline that would be excluded under the preferred action 
but protected under the initial boundary includes rocky or eroding bluffs with intermittent beaches in the north, followed by sandy beaches and coastal dunes with occasional rocky shores in the center, and eroding bluffs and scattered beaches in the south. The diverse habitats allow for, the, for this region to be considered the Serengeti of the sea, ensuring the connectivity of the ecosystems that make up this unique region through management protections is essential. The essential, the initial boundary designation containing ecosystems that will become important new habitat for species as they might migrate due to anthropogenetic climate change. Marine species are particularly sensitive to shifts in temperature, partly due to the stable thermal conditions of the ocean. Due to this, marine species have been recorded shifting deeper and poleward at a faster rate than terrestrial species. As species range shifts, there are also changes to quality and availability of habitat. Climate change is an immediate concern and must be included in all considerations for future endeavors. With, the species, with species habitat ranges shifting towards the poles and into deeper waters, it is imperative that we take steps to protect areas that will become essential to the propagation of species. I would like to again thank NOAA for continuing the process to designate another marine area as a sanctuary. Um, the Environmental Defense Center looks forward to continued engagement during this designation process as we look to the, this management strategy to protect and restore coastal and marine ecosystems in years to come. Thank you. Thank you. Next up is Cody Phillips, Matthew Ramirez, Claudia Harmon Worthen, Julie Reyes, and then I'd like to try and go revisit, go back and revisit two folks who we had some audio issues with earlier. So Cody Phillips. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Cody Phillips. I'm the policy analyst for California Coast Keeper Alliance and the Otter Project. Um, just wanted to start off by saying we're in strong support of the designation of this marine sanctuary. Um, my comment today is going to have two main points. The first is that NOAA should choose the boundary alternative that provides the sanctuary protections where the protections are most needed. Um, to kind of echo what most commenters have said today, the preferred boundary alternative really leaves a stark gap outside of Morro Bay. And that gap exposes prime sea otter habitat, tribally important marine resources to pollution and development without the protections offered by the sanctuary. And the two reasons provided from uh, by NOAA for that alternative seem a bit backwards. The first is there's a concern about the unprecedented amount of seabed disturbance and impacts from offshore wind. But the National Marine Sanctuary Act gives NOAA the tools to maintain and restore these types of areas when such impacts and harm occur. Um, the purpose of a marine sanctuary is to protect nationally important coastal waters and, as Paul mentioned at the beginning of the workshop, to balance multiple uses. Uh, accordingly, NOAA should not avoid covering a region that is most vulnerable to planned development and associated harm. Um, second, NOAA stated that its preferred alternative was a response to Indigenous community input, um, and this is a type of a compromise from a naming dispute. But that choice seems to fail to recognize that all the Indigenous groups wanted this area protected. Um, so failing to incorporate the region because of a naming dispute seems backwards. It's not really responsive community input. It ignores the desires of the Indigenous communities um, that wanted that area to be a part of this marine sanctuary. Um, the second point I wanted to make has to do with uh, ocean acidification and hypoxia. Um, recent studies have demonstrated that effects of nutrients in coastal sewage treatment plants not only exacerbate changes in ocean chemistry, but also alter habitat capacity, really compressing the habitat to a devastating effect. Um, the impacts of coastal sewage treatment plant discharges really dwarf impacts from nitrogen from rivers, streams, storm drains, and even climate change and global greenhouse gases. While the proposed uh, National Marine Sanctuary is just north of the Southern California Bight, where most of these impacts are being seen. Um, the Gaviota Extension places the sanctuary within that bite, and the land-based causes of ocean acidification, uh, like nutrient discharge um, from wastewater treatment plants, really exist throughout the Central Coast. Um, and ongoing research shows that this is happening not just in the Southern California Bight, but throughout the state. Um, with, uh, we also wanted to highlight that there are major tributaries to the coastal waters in the proposed sanctuary, like the Santa Inez River, uh, which are impaired for nutrients. And uh, San Luis Obispo County has the second most sanitary sewer overflows in the state since the beginning of 2023. With such a pressing threat to the integrity of the proposed sanctuary, we just urge NOAA to participate in California regulatory processes to ensure that nutrient risk discharges um, and nutrient runoff from marine sanctuary into the marine sanctuary are mitigated. I'm running out of time, but I just wanted to say thank you and I hope my um, comments well received. Thank you. 
So next to speak is Matthew Ramirez, followed by Claudia Harmon Worthen, Julie Reyes, and then I'd like to go back and revisit Jacqueline Moore and Daniela Schulman. So Matthew. Hi, hello, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Matthew Ramirez, and I am a legal fellow and the final speaker from the Environmental Defense Center. And I'm also here to speak in support of the proposed sanctuary designation. And we at EDC want to again publicly thank NOAA and its staff for the immense time and effort that went into the sanctuary proposal. And we again want to thank the Northern Chumash Tribal Council for petitioning for the Marine Sanctuary designation and being involved in the process. EDC specifically and fervently supports the selection of the initial boundary alternative along with the Gaviota Coast extension for the official Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. Moving forward, these initial proposed boundaries will provide essential contiguous protection between the two neighboring marine sanctuaries already in existence. The Gaviota extension will further encompass vital natural resources that sustain wildlife, including oceanic intersections and geographic features that are unique to that portion of the coast and would therefore not be protected by sanctuary designation without the extension otherwise. Among the most important reasons, and the one that I'm here to speak on, that we advocate for the initial boundary and the Gaviota extension is that leaving these large areas out of the new sanctuary leaves these areas far more vulnerable to other more immediate threats from new oil and gas drilling, seabed mining, and other similar threats that could be prevented by sanctuary designation. The central coast of California, as we all know, has suffered the consequences of oil and gas production, both on and offshore, for many decades beginning with the monumental oil spill off Santa Barbara in 1969, which ignited a concerted effort to rid our coastline of these activities, yet still they continue and still they create harm to the marine environment. We are therefore supporting the proposed regulations to prohibit new exploration for, development, and production of oil, gas, or minerals within the proposed sanctuary boundaries. We also support the proposed regulations that prohibit future oil, gas, and mineral exploration and subsequent development and production outside of any already existing reservoirs. Furthermore, we at EDC are also urging that the sanctuary not allow seismic surveys as a form of exploration for fossil resources. Highlighting the true scale of the threat from oil and gas to our coastal regions, it was only this summer that we at EDC were finally victorious in a nine year legal challenge to stop offshore fracking here in our own backyard, up against legal counsel from the American Petroleum Institute, ExxonMobil, and others. That saga began all the way back in 2014 when we learned by Freedom of Information Act requests that more than 50 permits have been issued by the federal government for offshore fracking and acidizing well stimulation treatments without any public environmental review whatsoever. And as I have one of our own attorneys has said, the Central California coast is one of the most ecologically rich and important regions in the world. And as many others have noted, the climate crisis continues to escalate. Ending these destructive extraction processes is a matter of our survival, not just for the whales, the otters, and all the animals in the channel and along the coastline, but for all life on Earth. We at EC urge NOAA to move forward with the sanctuary, initial boundaries, and the Gaviot extension, as this is the opportunity to permanently settle the issue once and for all, creating an unbroken, no-go zone for oil and gas exploitation all along the California coast, stretching all the way from San Francisco to Santa Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. So next we have Claudia Harmon Worthen, Julie Reyes, Jacqueline Moore, Daniela Schulman, and Carol Blaney. Claudia? Um, uh, it's all right for me to say a couple more words. I did speak earlier. Uh, I didn't use up all my time, but uh, I don't oh. think I would this, if I could just quickly, I just wanted to make sure that you know that we're Cambria and, and San Simi and Morro Bay. This is the critical part for upwelling. And it's one of only four places in the world that has this and it feeds all of the oceans. So it, it's very critical that this be protected. So I'll, I'll stop with that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry about that, Claudia. So next is Julie Reyes. Julie? Hello. Hi. Good afternoon. My name is Julie Reyes, and I'm a senior staff recruiter at Rivian. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to participate in today's public meeting. Rivian Automotive is an independent U.S. manufacturer of all electric vehicles whose mission is dedicated to sustainability and addressing the climate crisis head on. I am also an indigenous woman of Potawatomi and Cherokee descent and the co-founder and co-chair of Rivian's Indigenous Peoples Council, 
one of eight belonging resource groups at the company. As a council, we honor indigenous culture and its thriving presence by providing guidance to the company on land acknowledgements, tribal partnerships, and sustainability advocacy. Our products will help accelerate the decarbonization of the environment and the economy, but we don't want to limit our company's impact to just the transportation and energy sectors. We recognize that addressing the climate crisis will require individuals, communities, governments, and industries to come together like never before on issues like land and water conservation, responsible sourcing, and equity. These are all vital components of the climate movement. And that is why I am here today on behalf of Rivian's 18,000 employees around the globe to voice our company's support for the proposed Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. As the first tribally led marine sanctuary campaign, this designation carries historic significance, both in terms of indigenous led conservation and in the proposed protection of Chumash sacred sites dating back thousands of years. Indigenous-led conservation is crucial in the ongoing efforts to protect the natural resources of which tribal communities have been the original stewards and key to that preservation moving forward. We want to thank the Northern Chumash Tribal Council for leading this movement. We believe that NOAA can meet the tribe's request to maximize conservation benefits and set a high standard for responsible renewable energy development in the surrounding area. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, Jacqueline Moore, followed by Daniela Schulman, Carol Blaney, Teresa Brady, Denise Allen. So Jacqueline. Jacqueline, on our end, if you're speaking, we can't hear you. It's showing that you are offline for some reason, which is what it's consistently been saying for a while. So I'm not sure how to help troubleshoot that, unfortunately. So we can try and come back to you again. Um, let's go ahead and try Daniela Schulman. Daniela, if you're speaking, we're unable to hear you as well. It oh, hello, not... can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Fantastic. Um, thank you so much for the ability to give public comment. My name is Daniela. Um, I lived for years in Goleta, California, uh, right off the Channel Islands Brain Sanctuary. I'm an avid scuba diver, a sailor, a deep lover of coastal ecosystems and our oceans. I'm also a professional clean energy and climate advocate. I support the swift designation of the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary to protect biodiversity and the cultural sites off the coast. I have three suggestions. First, I fully support collaborative tribal management and the establishment of an advisory council that includes all tribal groups and elevates traditional ecological knowledge in the education and management of the sanctuary um, and puts all tribes, not just federally recognized tribes on equal footing. Second, as many have noted, uh, we are facing a biodiversity and a climate crisis. So I support prohibiting oil and gas infrastructure within sanctuary boundaries to facilitate a swift phase out of fossil fuels and a transition to zero carbon energy systems and economies consistent with California's goals and our federal targets that are based in science and absolutely necessary to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. To the same end, I support the largest possible boundary the original proposal with the Gaviota extension and the equitable expeditious development of offshore wind. Uh, as some have noted, there is precedent for special use permits uh, for fiber op optic cables, and I encourage NOAA to explore opportunities to do the same to swiftly permit um, any offshore wind transmission necessary to connect those floating turbines to land while also supporting important habitat and diverse ecosystems. Um, Thank you very much for the opportunity, and I hope that the designation comes swiftly in the in the next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Jacqueline Moore, if you can hear me, I would suggest that you go ahead and um, log out of the GoToWebinar and go ahead and come back in and see if that will help any um, issues that we're having with you being offline. <clears throat> so next up, um, and, and Jacqueline, if you um, are able to do that and come back online, if I see you, then I will go ahead and call you at that time. So next up is Carol Blaney, followed by Teresa Brady, Denise Allen, Allison Dahlman, and Kai Tran. So Carol Blaney. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Wonderful. Thank you so much for the opportunity to comment today. I'm Carol Blaney, a biologist, photographer, retired National Park Service Ranger, a California resident, and a years long visitor to Morro Bay and the Central Coast, which my family and I love dearly. Beginning with the initial Northern Chumash led proposal, your efforts to create a comprehensive and thoughtful draft designation are inspiring. And I strongly support the, the designation of the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. This thank you on behalf of all future generations who will enjoy this ocean and all the species that will survive because of your work. Given your overall vis vision, I urge you to choose the initial boundary alternative with the extensions and full protection for the Rodriguez Seamount. This is the choice that will most effectively protect more than 7,500 square miles of ocean along California's beautiful coast. The preferred alternative is deeply problematic. It leaves the ocean between Morro Bay and Cambria as the, the coastline's garbage chute, essentially, where activities prohibited in the adjoining sanctuaries, such as drilling for oil and gas, mining, dumping, and disruption of other kinds, would not only continue, but be concentrated in a small area, really damaging it. It would affect the character of the central coast, beloved since the Chumash and Solomon communities first lived here. It would diminish blue economy visitation to the area and cause harm to the more than 60 endangered species found here, including, including southern sea otters, humpback and right whales, leatherback turtles, and many more. Disruption in this unprotected chute would spread to sanctuary water since the ocean and its creatures don't recognize human drawn boundaries. I understand that difficult trade offs are involved. The proposed wind farms adjacent to the sanctuary could help stave off climate change and create jobs. But leaving an unprotected gap between Morro Bay and Cambria loops this chute open to oil and gas development, which is antithetical to climate health. I strongly support the initial boundary alternative with the understanding that NOAA can work with all stakeholders to establish environmentally and economically sound permitting for offshore wind. Such energy, ah, <laughs> lose my tongue there. Such energy development ought to be undertaken carefully to prevent ill effects on human communities and on wild species. Designating the initial boundary alternative in both extensions would bring to life a vision of ocean health and a continuing haven for humans stretching from time immemorial deep into the future. Thank you again for all your work and please consider um, designating the full extent of the initial boundary alternative as protected. Thank you. Okay, next is Teresa Brady, followed by Denise Allen, Allison Dahlman, Kai Tran, and Sebastian Revels. So, Teresa. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I want to uh, express thank you for starting this process of protecting this marine sanctuary and then ask you to support the original 7,000 square mile sanctuary for uh, all the reasons people have clarified for you in previous comments, the wildlife, the endangered species, the historic areas and I, um, I do support wind energy. So I think that the solution asking for you to um, do a, a special permit process for the transmission lines when that happens um, is the way to do it rather than taking two, was it 200 or 2000 square miles out of the sanctuary for all the other purposes. I think it's very important to make sure that it's excluded oil and and gas drilling is excluded from the area as it is extremely harmful to the climate and to wildlife. And um, somebody mentioned that it's otter breeding ground. 
so I think that's a very important reason as well. Um, and then somebody commented that the whales won't know to go around. And I, that's also a good point. Um, I guess that's it. Thank you. I'll probably do written comments too. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so next is Denise Allen, Allison Dahlman, Kai Tran, Sebastian Rebels, and then Adam Wedeking. So Denise. Hi, my name is Denise Allen. I support the Chumash, the Chumash Heritage um, Marine Sanctuary. I'm commenting personally. I live, I've lived by Avila Beach for 31 years. I would like all tribes to be involved. The Santa Ynez Chumas have a large focus on gambling casinos, and I know the local tribes in my area have been really involved in a lot of protection and, and have um, rallied to protect their sites. And I want to honor that. And I feel they should be involved with the conservation in perpetuity. I'm also a representative of the Friends of Wild Cherry Canyon. This land is adjacent to the proposed sanctuary by Avila Beach. The vision for this property is conservation, protection of sensitive habitat and Chumash cultural sites and reasonable public access for recreational use. I feel like the Marine Sanctuary has a, a similar um, uh, desires. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next to speak is Allison Dahlman. Allison? Hello? Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, I'm Dr. Allison Dahlman and I live in Cambria. It is short-sighted and offensive that you would actually consider excluding the area between my home and Point Bichon. Our area is vital for biodiversity and provides essential connectivity for many species. It's a sanctuary not only for the animals who live here, but also for all of us who appreciate nature in her purest form. I love walking this dog area with my dogs. I bring friends and family here so they can appreciate the serenity and the wildlife. We're deeply connected to this area because of the wildlife and because it is unadulterated. This plan would hurt the animals, habitat, and all of us. Our oceans are warming, becoming more toxic from human activity. And we have fewer animals here than we used to. So I feel you're directly targeting marine life, me, my well being, along with so many others, including indigenous people, in leaving this precious area out. We know how destructive oil and gas are, so they must be banned from this area, as well as cables for wind. Wind farms would disrupt migrating whales and other species, detrimentally alter habitats, decrease species survival, discharge contaminants, further harming wildlife and their homes, and they're noisy. Would you want this in your home? The Rodriguez Seamount must be protected for biodiversity. Please designate the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary with the initial boundary alternative, including the Gaviota Coast Extension, 7,600 square miles, to protect our wildlife already struggling from anthropogenic causes, as well as our living ocean and sanctuary in the broadest sense of the word. Thank you. Thank you. So next up is Kai Tran, Sebastian Revels, Adam Wedeking, followed by Dolores Howard. So Kai, you want to give your comment? Oh, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Uh, my name is Kai Tran, and I am representing myself and Earth Echo International. I'm a recent alumni of California Polytechnic State University, San Luis Obispo, and graduated with a Bachelor's of Science studying environmental management and protection, and I'm currently studying at Duke University pursuing a Master of Environmental Management. I had the amazing opportunity to live in the California Central Coast, and during that time grew to become deeply connected to the ocean environment throughout San Luis Obispo County. 
During my time in San Luis Obispo, I had the opportunity to work with the Northern Chumash Tribal Council, and I quickly learned just how committed the local indigenous peoples are to protecting this gem of our global ocean. The Northern Chumash also hold deep traditional ecological knowledge to this region and are owed the ability to wholly work in the stewardship and management of this proposed National Marine Sanctuary. I support a swift designation of the proposed Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary as it was initially nominated. As such, I oppose the agency alternative boundary map, which omits the section of the sanctuary adjacent to Morro Bay. Offshore wind should not take prioritization over the protection of our ocean and its ecological, recreational, cultural, and archaeological resources. Any such wind project should occur outside the boundaries of the proposed sanctuary, as the Northern Chumash Tribal Council initially proposed, and other associated activities ought to, ought to be permitted and regulated under the National Marine Sanctuary. As initially proposed by the Northern Chumash Tribal Council, the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary needs to include the ocean waters of and adjacent to Morro Bay up to Cambria and the 5B extension down towards Gaviota. Tribal co-management is essential to the sanctuary. Much of, this indigenous, much of the indigenous groups in California are not recognized and the schema for management as proposed by NOAA needs to include all tribal groups of the region, not just those with federal recognition. As a young person, this personally matters to me because the state of our world and oceans are at dire threat of climate change and continued degradation. I deeply cherish my time on the coast and as such experiences are essential for our future generations. The biodiversity hotspot that is the California Central Coast cannot wait for action to be taken. The California coast has already been battered by damaging development, whether it's the discovery of more than 20,000 barrels of DDT near Huntington Beach in 2021, or the roughly 130,000 gallons of oil spill that occurred in 2015 in Refugio. I have spent time at Avila Beach and left with oil tar on my clothes. Designating the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary is needed now as proposed by the Northern Chumash Tribal Council. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Sebastian Revels, Adam Wedeking, Dolores Howard, Wayne Coteau, Sierra Weaver. Sebastian? Hello, hello. Um, can you hear me all right? Yes, go ahead. Awesome. Cool. Um, well, it's been really nice to hearing all of the support um, for the sanctuary, um, especially with regards to having like the largest contiguous boundary for it. Um, I, I really hope that that's honored and that this sanctuary ends up having the largest possible contiguous boundary that it can have. And so, because I mean, because like otherwise, like, what's the point of public comment if we're not going to um, honor that? But um, so, with that being said, um, I also just want to highlight that how important it is because uh, if some of these other alternatives, like the ones in two, three, and four, they would remove connection between this sanctuary and the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary. And just like we're missing habitat corridors, we need migration paths on land that we're so desperately missing. We need that in the ocean as well. And so ensuring that um, industry isn't able to do what it wants in these areas um, by having these kinds of protections is, is really vital and key. Um, I'm also concerned about um, with regards to industries um, like oil and gas industries getting involved um they just want to look at the state of the world with climate change and how everything is going like they just want to gung gung-ho and get what they can at the last bit and it's we know climate we know climate change is fueled by greenhouse gases and it's coming from these kinds of industries climate change is one of the top reasons that we're in this extinction crisis and like we haven't seen this kind of extinction crisis since the meteor that wiped out the dinosaurs it's really in dire straits and we have to as a society be living differently than the way that we have been doing we need energy solutions that are localized sustainable and we have to switch to that asap um you know sometimes like i i've, I've been involved with different public comments or diff all different kinds of, of uh um, wildlife throughout california and oftentimes i find that industry manages to to eke out because the people um who make these decisions um uh, curtailed to them. And so over at NOAA, if you guys think that like we need oil and gas on the sanctuary, I really want you to consider the reality that the U.S. military is the single largest institutional source of greenhouse gas emissions in the world. And so we really have to ask ourselves if do we want our energy needs to be going to military bases and weapons around the world, or do we want to restrict our energy needs to keeping AC on in the summer and heat in the winter? We have to change how we're using the energy that's available to us as opposed to full steam ahead status quo. And that's what would be happening if we don't put a 
full ban of gas and oil on this sanctuary. Um, and so that's that's just that's one of the points I, I really um, hope you guys consider, because um, otherwise I don't really see the point of creating sanctuary if we're just going to be allowing gas and oil to keep doing this thing and keep making climate change worse. We have to change. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Up next, Adam Wedeking, followed by Dolores Howard, Wayne Coteau, Sierra Weaver, and then Jamie Diamond or Jaime Diamond. So Adam. Good afternoon. My name is Adam Wedeking. I am the chair of the Social and Environmental Justice Committee of the Universalist Unitarian Church of Riverside in Southern California. And on behalf of our committee, I am just wanted to comment in support of the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary. Um, the seventh principle of our Unitarian Universalist faith is about affirming and promoting respect for the interdependent web of all existence of which we are a part. And we know that the biodiverse coast is a very important part of that web that needs to be protected. Uh, because the Chumash people have protected this coastline for thousands of years, we know their ancestral knowledge is critical in this task. And so we, for these reasons, we support um, the swift designation of this sanctuary. Um, and especially, I want to sort of repeat what has been said quite, quite often. Um, we want to make sure the sanctuary includes the initial boundary alternative with that Gaviota Coast extension just to make sure we are protecting as much of the sacred coast as we can. Um, our committee has submitted letters of support with some more some more of our concerns um, and, and issues with this, but uh, all in all, we are definitely in favor of this and are glad that you all are working on it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Dolores Howard. Hello, my name is Dolores Howard and I represent the San Luis Obispo Beaver Brigade. We are a local organization in the county dedicated to supporting our watersheds by supporting the beavers and their natural process of building dams, creating wetlands, and defining an entire ecosystem in their role as a keystone species. We enthusiastically support the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary with the inclusion of the coastal waters of Morro Bay, Morro Bay in Cambria, forming a contiguous sanctuary from the Monterey Bay National Marine Sanctuary to the Channel Islands National Marine Sanctuary. It's important to us that Morro Rock, being a sacred site for both Salinan and Chumash peoples, be included in this sanctuary, along with the coastal waters between Cambria and Morro Rock. This is a well-loved, well-visited portion of our coast that we need to steward for our future's children. We are in support of this proposal adhering to the suggestions outlined in the 2019 IPBES for including indigenous people in the management of our oceans. We look forward with hope to the benefits that the planet will experience with this protection of water and life. Thank you. Wayne Coteau, Sierra Weaver, Jaime Diamond, Trisha Velasquez. Thanks, Nicole. Hi, Wayne Cotto with CCA California. We take our resources and sustainability of our marine ecosystems and resources very seriously and participate at all levels. We've been participating in this process since 2015. It is important to us and we are disappointed that the recreational fishing is not specifically recognized as an allowed activity in addition to the already mentioned commercial fishing after all the meetings that we have been bringing this issue up at. We want it noted that CPFD is not the only type of recreational fishing that will have social economic impacts by this proposal. The rationale for designation based on ecosystem, habitat, biodiversity, and other uh, can be used for the whole California coastline, which says it's really not unique. The shipwrecks that have been there forever don't need any further protections. The numerous overlaps of government agencies, councils, commissions, etc., 
is mind-boggling to the residents of the state and the users of the resources. The size of this proposal is extreme. There are other ways to protect seamounts without extended boundaries. This proposal will cover 50% of our coastline. We are again disappointed that this proposal does not qualify to be included in the state's 30 by 30 project at this time. This needs to be fixed prior to designation. These projects need to work together for the residents of California. So much of our coastline uh, down, to, down to the Gaviota Coast is untouched. We would hate to see development and increase access to this pristine coastline. The issues of vessel discharges is a concern based on current regulations and practices. The size of the proposal is not realistic for many marine operations. Enforcement will not be able to enforce this proposed restriction. Finally, the National Marine Sanctuary is going to be, if, if the National Marine Sanctuary is going to be designated, we suggest a more generic, more geographic type name that doesn't single out a single user group as the National Marine Sanctuary is supposed to be inclusive for all. Other emphasis in education, outreach, uh, cultural things can happen when the sanctuary's facilities, documents, and all the other things that uh, will be created during that process of implementation. And that would make it more inclusive for all the communities. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next we have Sierra Weaver, followed by Jamie Diamond, Tricia Velasquez, Robert Collier, and then because we inadvertently called on a speaker twice and allowed them a little bit more time, we did have a request by Jordan Wright to um, finish out his comments. So Jordan, we will call on you to give you another minute to finish that. So Sierra Weaver. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Great. Hi, my name is Sierra Weaver and I am commenting today as just an individual citizen. I'm actually calling in from the East Coast of the United States. Um, I'm not a resident of California, but I have been visiting the Central Coast um, for the past 30 years. And this area, in particular, the area between Cambria and Morro Bay is my favorite place on the planet, uh, in large part because of the spectacular marine environment. In my often multiple times a year trips to this area, I don't think there has ever been a time that I have visited that I haven't seen migrating whales, sea otters hang out in Morro Bay, um, and all of the spectacular um, marine species that make it so incredibly special. I am commenting today to urge the prompt designation of the Chumash Heritage National Marine Sanctuary with the broadest possible boundaries, including the initial boundary alternative with the extension from the Gaviota Coast. I think that ensuring the protection of the area from Cambria down to Morro Bay is absolutely essential to providing for these critical marine species, species and ensuring that there is not created, <clears throat> that we're not creating a sacrifice zone in which industrial activity is piled up into this very special place. Um, as many commenters have said, I strongly support offshore wind and I believe that offshore wind can be um, implemented off the central coast of California in the context of the marine sanctuaries. And in fact, as I listened to the presentation before public comment, I was struck by the emphasis on all kinds of uses being allowed, but them being allowed in the context of resource protection. Also the emphasis on science, research, and monitoring. When I heard that, it just struck me that this seems like exactly the type of place where we need a marine sanctuary designation now before offshore wind is produced. And we need offshore wind to proceed in that context. We need to show that offshore winds can be done right and can be done with full of these spectacular natural resources. Um, now is the time for protection of the coast. Now is the time for renewable energy. And I thank you for this process. I thank you for all of the diverse constituents who spoke today. It's been very inspiring. Thank you. Thank you.